Hello, I'm Dr. Gwen Levitt. I'm an attending psychiatrist at District Medical Group that provides medical care to Valley Hospital. Um, my co-author is Jennifer Weller. Uh, she is a psychologist at the same program. Uh, this is a presentation on the demographics of uh, COVID-19 positive patients in an inpatient setting. This was a retrospective chart review of 238 COVID positive patients who were identified uh, inpatient during uh, the pandemic. The first COVID positive patient was identified on March 29th and data was collected till December 31st, 2020. The age range was 17 to 83 years with the average uh, age of 41 years. Uh, as you can see, the demographic characteristics uh, was more weighted on male patients. Uh, that is because several of the big uh, outbreaks occurred on all male units. Uh, the uh, race and ethnicity breakdown uh, was heavily weighted towards white and non-Hispanic and black and non-Hispanic patients. Uh, you can see uh, to the right, the Arizona State Data Dashboard uh, showed uh, that there was a, a different distribution uh, than what we saw in the hospital. Uh, as we all know at this point, there are several risk factors that uh, make a person more susceptible to COVID-19, including chronic lung diseases, diabetes, heart disease, and obesity. Uh, the state data dashboard show that about 16% of the general population have one of these comorbidities. Below you can see the breakdown of the comorbidities in the COVID positive patients in an inpatient setting. Um, COPD, cardiac conditions, diabetes, and obesity. Uh, this patient population uh, is mostly seriously mentally ill. It is known that the seriously mentally ill population has a 20 to 30 year shorter lifespan than the general population. Uh, and uh, have a very high comorbidity rate. And uh, our population inpatient uh, clearly demonstrated this in comparison um, to the 16% uh, noted by the state dashboard. Most of the patients had flu -like, mild flu-like symptoms or were asymptomatic. Uh, many patients were exposed to a COVID positive patient and then they would be tested, they would have no symptoms. So many of them were found incidentally to be COVID positive, which as we know has been a particular problem in the community is that many people don't know that they have an illness. Um, eight, eight or 3% of our population were hospitalized. Uh, six of those patients uh, were hospitalized for several days for pneumonia or complications such as dehydration. We had one death of a 79-year-old male who uh, suffered from dementia and multiple medical conditions, uh, had a DNR status, and his family did not want to pursue uh, extreme measures. A 43-year-old Hispanic male was placed on a ventilator for three weeks and was so debilitated he went to a, a skilled nursing facility. The hospitalization rate for our cohort was 3% as compared to 7% in the community, which is an excellent outcome. The average length of stay for patients uh, during the uh, cohort study period uh, on the general population, those who did not have COVID, was 28 days. Our patient population, uh, their average length of stay was 33 days. Uh, this was often because placements refused to accept patients that were COVID positive or were COVID recovered, uh, making them complete their 14-day quarantine in the hospital. Uh, so many patients did not have a place to um, live in which they could continue to quarantine. Um, and 20% of the population actually showed documentation that the patient was discharge ready but could not leave because of the quarantine. Uh, the study also looked at uh, seclusion restraint episodes uh, to determine if COVID-19 um, in any way impacted people um, to become uh, aggressive um, or act out inappropriately requiring to be placed in seclusion or restraint. Uh, this, we compared the COVID positive cohort to uh, those who were COVID negative during the study period. On the general units where patients were COVID negative, only 19 patients had seclusion restraint episodes, uh, whereas there were 11 on the COVID positive unit the vast majority occurred in the first uh, month or two uh, that we were struggling with COVID and uh, figuring out how to quarantine acutely. 
um, symptomatic patients and uh, creating diversions for them while they were um, quarantined to their room. Uh, the psychiatric facility, uh, the patient rooms do not have their own TVs or any type of amenities because all of that is done in the communal setting. Um, and as the staff um, learned to be more flexible and we created um, diversions for the patients such as uh, providing them tablets and recreational materials that they could use in their room while they were quarantined, uh, that seemed to be um, very helpful. We also looked at as needed PRN medications as an indication of agitation, anxiety. On the general unit, 892 doses of PRN medications were given for anxiety and agitation. And on the COVID-19 positive units, only 334 PRNs were requested. Uh, this may suggest that overall, the COVID positive patients um, are not um, having significant um, issues. Uh, it has been positive that the positive that the SMI population would somehow have a lower well-being as re results of COVID-19. Um, so far, the cohort, at least based on rates of hospitalization, seclusion restraint, and needed PRN medication, suggests that they actually did better than those who were um, not COVID positive. So overall, the cohort sample had few COVID-19 symptoms or complications. The COVID positive patients had fewer seclusion restraint episodes and need for PRN medications than their negative peers. This might again suggest better well being and resilience than providers expected. Uh, the cohort had a very high comorbidity rates compared to the general population, including those that are known for uh, risk factors for COVID 19. 